Hello, everyone. Here we are with my daughter. Hello, how are you? So, in this new video, we're going back to the 80s. We're going to talk about the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System. We're going to rank the best sports games in this console. Excitebike launched in Japan on November 1984, in the US on October 1985, in Canada and Europe in 1986. It's a motocross cross game packed with fun and challenges. Its creative track design and simple yet challenging mechanics make it a must play for speed fans. Players had to qualify in the first three to pass to the next track, avoiding oil slicks, speed bumps and using ramps to jump higher. The A button accelerates the bike and the B button activates a turbo boost that enhances the bike speed but overheats the engine if it is used for too long forcing to be stopped for a cooldown period. This happened to me many times. Awesome game. You could also crash the other motorbikes and fall down. Excitebike can be unlocked in Excitebike 64, which was released in the 2000s for the Nintendo 64. Excitebike World Rally, released in the 2009, is a great sequel for Wii. Capcom's Gold Medal Challenge 92 Launched in North America and Japan in 1992, the same year the Olympic Games in Barcelona took place. However, it was launched in Europe on June 1993, one year later. That's quite strange. The game tries to capture the Olympic thrill and it succeeds. While not the first Olympic video game on the Famicom NES, it was my favorite. Many nations, enjoyable music and the events were engaging, although some were very similar like the 100 meters and the 4 by 100 meters relay. One thing that I loved about this game is its caricaturesque style. I loved it, like when the athletes got tired and opened their mouths like tired dogs. This game is also notable because it allowed up to 8 human competitors to compete in the Olympic Games against each other, although only 2 at a time. Great innovation for the time, although I never played more than 4 people at the same time. If you enjoyed this game as a kid, you'll probably like my daddy's game, Metal Winners 24. Go to Steam and wishlist it, please, don't forget it, you'll enjoy it. You can play javelin throw, basketball shooting, 100 meters, cycling, and many more. Go to Steam and wishlist it, please. Seven. RC Prom 2, launched on December 1992, it's a sequel of RRC Pro-Am. Launched in 1988 in North America and Europe, though not a sports game because these aren't cars but radio controlled cars, that is to say toys. But we included this game in this video because this racing game offers addictive gameplay, with fun races involving shooting opponents or leaving oil slicks using an overhead isometric view. A player navigates a radio controlled car through various tracks engaging in combat against the other three cars. To advance to the next track, you have to be among to the top three racers on each track. Achieving this, you receive race points and money, which are used to upgrade vehicles and buy weapons. The collection of power-up items improves the car's performance during the race. One very good thing to mention is that the game also has multiplayer mode, in which up to four human players can race against each other. Imagine this was 1992, a very advanced thing for the time. Six. There are two number six. Because we don't agree. So the next one are two games in one, Captain Tsubasa 1 and 2. In Japan, or Tecmo Cup soccer game in North America, Super Campeones in Latin America. Soccer RPG released like many games in this video by Tecmo in 1988 in Japan and in 1992 in North America and Europe. With a unique focus on anime, these games offer an exciting experience for fans. 
The gameplay is not real-time soccer but more of a simulation game, requiring strategic choices to win games with Captain Tsubasa, Misaki against the fantastic Tachibana twins, Hyuga, Snyder and others. This game was the innovator of games that would be known as cinematic soccer. The result of the choices made by the players are animated on screen. I'm really proud because I personally achieved finishing both games, although I didn't even know a single word in Japanese. That was the only version available in my country in those times. But as most kids in my generation, we didn't even care. We only wanted to play the game that Captain Tsubasa starred. We learned by guessing what were the Japanese words for shooting, passing, dribbling, etc. Did you guys play the Japanese or the translated version? Did you understand it? Tecmobol, launched in 1989 for the NAS. It's an American football video game developed and released by Tecmo. Again, Tecmo, this company knew how to create sport games. It was originally released as an arcade game in 1987. I never played the arcade version. This was the first console game to include real NFL players. The console version was extremely popular, spawning various sequels. A highly regarded football game with simple controls yet engaging gameplay. The player can choose between three modes, one player, two player and coach. The players only choose the place in the coach mode. This, this was something new which didn't exist in the arcade version. Tecmo Ball only uses players from 12 of the best and most popular teams of the time. This game improved American football games in those times. Let's compare it with 10 Yard Fight 1983, which was a good game but Tecmo Ball launched six years after it is much better. Tecmo Ball has been released many times including Xbox 2005 and Wii 2007 and Nintendo Switch in 2018. In number 5, there are two different golf games because we don't agree. Mario Open Golf, as it was known in Japan, or NES Open Tournament Golf, launched in 1991 in Japan and North America and in 1992 in Europe. They were slightly different. For example, the Famicom version Mario Open Golf is more difficult and featured five golf courses, whereas the NES Open Tournament Golf featured only three. This game is very similar to the original Golf, which was released for the Famicom in 1984, but with Mario as the protagonist. It improved graphics and course variety compared to that golf game. Like most Mario games released in the 80s and 90s, the first player played as Mario and the second player played as Luigi. I personally preferred playing as Mario. Golf. Yeah, that's the name. Just golf. It launched in Japan on May 1984, in North America on October 1985, and in Europe on November 1986. A solid golf game that offers strategic challenges. You may think it's simple, I know, but it was a really fun game, especially for golf lovers. Golf is the first video game to feature a power and accuracy bar for swinging the club and it introduced all the types of clubs. If you knew nothing about golf as a kid, you learned about wood, iron, sandwich and putters. This game didn't have music. Yeah, it was a very relaxing game, but still, it could be very competitive and frustrating when you hear the OB, out of bound sounds. In 1991, Nintendo identified the golfer as Mario in a gameplay guidebook. Don't you think it's similar to Mario? Nintendo's Wii game Captain Rainbow identifies the golfer as Osun. This game was in charge of Shigeru Miyamoto himself, one of the few sports games I could enjoy playing with my father. I remember playing the 18 holes against him. I miss those times. Golf secures the 10th position among the all-time best-selling games on the Famicom NES, having sold 4,010,000 copies. 
It stands as the second highest selling sports game, surpassed only by Excitebike. Many people believe that golf was so successful because the fathers bought the game to play with their kid. Was that your case? Tell me in the comments. Four. Tecmo NBA Basketball launched in 1992 in North America. Despite attempting to capture NBA excitement, this game lacks the depth and fluid gameplay expected in a basketball game nowadays. However, in those days, it was the greatest basketball game available. It was very complete with tournaments, statistics, all-star games, and it featured cinematic style cutscenes during gameplay. I always aim to be the best in every stat, which was impossible, especially in rebounds per game. By some reason, assists made by human players weren't scored in the stat, a bug in the game. The game featured all current NBA teams and players from the 91-92 NBA season. The Los Angeles Lakers team featured Magic Johnson despite his not actually playing in the NBA during that season, due to his retirement. The game also includes Michael Jordan, Karl Malone, Charles Barkley and Larry Bird. These were true legends. There are two number threes. Because we don't agree. Again. Again. F1 Sensation in Japan, known as Formula One Sensation in Europe, launched in 1993. It was Konami's first original Famicom game. It was entertaining in its time. It was a game that included a lot of customization for the car. Color, wing angles, tires, engines, etc. It was a great game where each driver in the game is divided in three levels based on real-life skill, A, B and C. It had all the real 16 circuits of the 1992 Formula 1 season plus Jerez and Finis as extras. Additionally, you could compete against real drivers like Ayrton Senna, Nigel Mansell or Michael Schumacher among others. Pit stops are included, and the team tells the player when to go to the pits for tires, wings and engine repair. Each race has 5 laps, allowing for an arcade-like experience, colliding with the opponent's cars heavily damaging them and slightly damaging yours. You could retire them from the race by crashing them. That was a good strategy if they were first in the championship. If you were a Formula 1 fan like me, this was a perfect game to play in those times. I don't agree. To me, number three is ice hockey. Launched in 1988. The play and mechanics of ice hockey are mostly similar to that of ice hockey in real life. Because it's an ice hockey game, obviously. When I played this game, I, had a, I have a smile on my face the whole time and I had an absolute blast. It's fast paced, pure gameplay. There are some regional differences in the team roster lineups. In Japan Famicom Disk System version, the lineup is Japan, United States, Canada, Poland, and listen to these two teams, Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union. This shows how old the game is. Well, back to the original differences. For the version launched in North America and Europe, the Japanese team was excluded and the Swedish team replaced it. The funniest ice hockey game on the Famicom or NES. I enjoyed defeating my dad in this game. He's very bad at playing this. And you play very well. Mike Tyson Punch Out launched in 1987. An absolute classic with charismatic characters, addictive gameplay mechanics and challenges that keep you glued to the screen. This boxing game is a timeless gem. You play as Lil Mac, a young boxer fighting his way up through ranks of the World Video Boxing Association. Lil Mac faces a total of 14 opponents. 3 in the minor circuit, 4 in the major circuit, 6 in the World Cup circuits, plus the final boss. 
Do you know who the boss was? None other than Mike Tyson. Yeah, you heard it right. This game included undisputed world heavyweight champion Mike Tyson as the final boss. After the license to use Tyson expired in 1990, he was replaced by the fictional Mr. Dream. It was believed that this license costed $50,000 at the time for a three year period. This transaction was something of a risk for Nintendo, as it occurred before Tyson won the World Boxing Council Heavyweight Championship on November 22, 1986, which greatly increased the profit for the game. Tecmo World Cup launched in 1990 in Japan and in 1991 in North America. It is a part of Techham World Cup released on arcade in 1985. What I'm about to say is very controversial, but it's my opinion. Probably the best football or soccer game that I played in the NES. While somewhat limited in options, this soccer game shines with its simple gameplay and exciting matches. It had an overhead view. Only one mode, World Cup, is available, playable by either one player against the computer AI or two players against each other. There are 16 available national teams that can be selected by the player. The opponent cannot be chosen manually if it is controlled by the AI. You have to defeat all the teams to be the world champion. Although there is no team management or strategy available, it was the perfect soccer game for quick and enjoyable gaming sessions. And that music, oh, you never got tired of it. Do you guys agree with me that this was the best soccer game on the NES or Famicom? Tell me in your comments. So do you agree with us on this list? Do you think we should have included another game? Please comment below. Like, subscribe. We'll probably make a second part with great games that are not in this video. Don't forget to visit Steam to play Metal Winners 24, a really cool game.